Are you being blessed so far? Yes. Grabe, no? The talk today is not easy to hear, but would you agree with me that we need it? Amen. So, now imagine ko in a way, when Moses was doing this to the Israelites, para siya actually nagsasermon, eh, di ba? Alam niyo yung feeling na naging mga anak dito, di ba? Yung pagka pinatawag na kayo ng magulang niyo. At sinesermonan kayo habang nakaupo, yung wala kang magawa. Tapos pinapagalitan ka lang, so ganun. But, but now that I'm getting older, and I realize that tough love is as important as gentle and loving love. Do you agree? Yes. Because if that will not be given to you, you will not go further in life. Amen? Can you look at the person beside you and tell that person, we need this. So here's what's the exciting thing that happened after that. So pagkatapos ni Moses, na meron ng mga principal's office and everything, he was now trying to console them. But he was saying this, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 32 to 33, ang sabi niya doon, But even after all he did, you refused to trust the Lord your God, who goes before you, looking for the best places to come, guiding you with a pillar of fire by night, and a pillar of cloud by day. So parang unti-unti niya nang pinapaalala, bukod sa mga pagkakamali nila, he was already reminding them. Pero tingnan niyo, kahit matigas yung ulo niyo, anong ginawa ng Diyos? Nagpadala pa rin ang pangangailangan niya. Tingin ka sa katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, nagpapadala lagi ang Diyos ng bawat pangangailangan niya. Do you agree? Yeah. Regardless if you're bad or you are good, that's how much God loves you. I want to state that fact today. But I love what Brother Bo was saying that he will not prevent the bad consequences of your bad choices. And that is the completeness of love God has. So what happened next is Moses reminded them of everything. Naalala nyo ba, mga anak, that the Lord led you to the promised land? That God appointed your leaders? That God allowed you to have victory? Because the promised land, may mga nakatira. Diba? They, they have armies, but they won't. And God prepared the land by dividing it for each tribe to flourish. If that's not persistent love, I don't know what it is. Do you agree? Parents who are parents here. Alam mo yung sitwasyon na pinagalitan mo yung anak mo, tapos inis na inis ka na sa kanya, tapos lalapit sa'yo, ang cute. Di ba nagtitimpi ka lang sa loob, pero parang gusto mo lang, Di ba? Pero sa loob ang saya mo. Tapos pero sa iyong mukha mo, syempre galit ka pa rin. So, I feel that sometimes God is just like that. Na yes, inaalaw niya ang mangyari, pero at the heart of it is a parent. Hindi niya titigilan. Di ba pag parents, pag nagalit ka pa sa anak mo, sasabihin mo sa kanya, lumayas ka dito, huwag ka na kumain, puputulin ko na yung cellphone mo lang, babawi mo ba? Hindi, di ba? Chances are, pag oras na nakainan, tatawagan mo pa rin. Di ba sasabihin mo, kumain na. Pero galit ko pa rin, di ba? Pero di ba, that's how you love the person. Kahit galit ka lang, mamahalin, ay ganun yun. That's why Moses was also talking about, aside from remembering the painful lessons, also remember that God has been persistent. Because the people of Israel were quite distracted. And that is the problem also of today, distractions. Would you agree? You remember that they were distracted when they were traveling to the promised land. There was manna from the desert. Diba? May dumadatay. Pero yung mga kasabay nilang hindi Israelita, nagreklamo, ay, ang init, ay, ang ganito. So sila din, nagreklamo na. Nahawa. And that happens today. Distraction happens today. And it's, uh, it's helping us have solemn, solemn dementia. Because the distractions feed you with so much, you don't even have time to process it well and digest it properly. What am I talking about? Sino dito yung nakaranas na, nasa sabihin mo, I want to send an email. So you get your phone, and then you saw a notification from TikTok, and you started scrolling on TikTok, and an hour later, you realize, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Nakalimutan mo na, you forgot already that you will send an email, and you fell to that rabbit hole already of scrolling and scrolling. Have you tried that when you want to sleep? I, I look at social media for a while before I sleep. You started looking at 11 p.m., 2 a.m. already. You're still scrolling. You agree? 
that feeling distracts you. So it, give, it takes away from you time to reflect. It takes away time from you to, to really think about your day and what you should be thankful for. And to add to this, even the algorithm does not know if the feed is good for you or not. Do you know that? I'm, I'm sure there are social media managers here. The metric for the, for the platform is this. If you are looking at something for quite some time and you're looking at a specific type of post frequently, naturally the algorithm will feed you more of that. So imagine if you're looking at travel posts from your friends, and though you are liking those travel posts, you're actually envious inside. Ako mga buwis ito. Papangit naman. Pa Europe-Europe pa. Hindi bagay. So, pero nila like mo kasi gusto mo makita yung update sa buhay nila. So, update ka. And the algorithm doesn't know that the feed is feeding, the, the feed is feeding your envy. So, what happens? It feeds you with more travel posts. And here you are at night scrolling, feeling to yourself, what have I done with my life? I'm getting behind. Napag-iiwan na na ako. Ba't sila kung saan saan nagpunta? Samantalang ako, dyan lang sa mula sa tabi. Diba? And it feeds you, it makes you forget that your life is already blessed. Do you agree? Can you look at the person beside you? Tell that person, stop that. I remember that TikTok is a good platform several years ago because there's still organic growth up to now. But I was so afraid to enter TikTok. You want to know why? Ask me why. Because when the, the moment I installed the application and I scrolled to the FYP for the first time, the initial feed was all dancing girls. You do it like this, you know? And for someone that has struggled with pornography and has, that has come from a broken family, I really knew that this would affect me. I cannot take any of this. So for the first moment after I saw that, I installed the app and not use it anymore. But after some time, there was a training that taught us, because since the platform is good, that you could actually curate your feed. You could actually tell Facebook, tell Instagram, or tell, tell TikTok that these are the kinds of feeds that I want. You, you just long press it. So if you don't like about long press it and say, I'm not interested. So that is directing the platform to feeds that are actually beneficial for you. So what am I talking about? Is because the way you fight distractions, is with intentional actions. Agree? You have to be intentional. Otherwise, the feed will just feed you. For example, you have self worth issues because you're a little bit on the chubby side and your feed is full of thin girls. Naturally, how would you feel? Diba? Malulungkot ka. Kasi kahit yun yung idea sa'yo, yun yung lagi matitignan, the, the platform will feed you more of that and it will not help you. So now, that's the solution. You be intentional, you create your feet, take away distractions. Can you say that here to the person beside you? Take away distractions. You can curate that. So now, what I do is that yung feet ko ngay sa TikTok, mas okay na po about toddler parenting, about uh, finances, about preachings, ganyan. Because I have curated it already. I'm now in the platform and I'm a content creator. So yun, nandun. So what am I... What am I saying here? The first thing that you want to do to, to remember the persistent love of God is to get rid of distractions. And the second thing is this. You need to establish rituals to remember God's lessons in love. Amen? Sino dito ang mga bagong kasal lang, newly married couples, or those who are engaged and want to, to get married soon? Ayan. Palapakan po natin sila. Hindi nila alam po anong pinapasok nila. <laughs> but can I tell this story? We learned this very important tip from our Nino that he told us that the traditional setup is this. The husband earns the income, the wife takes care of the household. But the dynamics have changed already. Since the um, usual setup now is a dual income family. So the Nino taught us that the if you are sharing in the providence, in the providing for the family, you should also take care both of you should take care of the household and the raising of the children. That will lessen the burden for your wife in the future, sabi na sa So it was a blessing we were doing that. So when we were newly married, I was particularly excited because I can finally tell myself, 
I have the power now. I control my life. My mom will not tell me to have my hair cut. You know? <laughs> you know? Because even if you're old, your moms can, can't help it. They will tell you. You have to get your hair cut even when I was living with her. But lo and behold, when I was already married, two weeks into it, I was going to a meeting. May meeting ako. Pag tingin ko sa aparador, wala na ako isang suot. Nakalimutan ko pa na magpanood din. So I imagine, shocks with great power comes great responsibility. It was a difficult time for us setting up because we don't know how to make a meal plan. We don't know how to, to, to normalize our grocery schedules. We don't know what to buy in the palenque. We don't know how to... Na, nasisiraan kami ng pagkain pag nagluluto kami, ganyan. Tapos parang, ang hirap pala nito. So, adulting is real. Okay, really, adulting is real. Diba? And now, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to tell you that we have achieved something. We have a routine already. We have a system already. Monday and Tuesday is for grocery and palengke and laundry. And family time. And simba time. Okay? Tapos, the rest of the days, hati kami ng asawa ko papasok. Yung asawa ko sa hapot ako magtatrabaho sa umaga. So that every time may nakatutok sa anak. And I realized that habits and routines and processes are important. Do you agree? Yes. It gives order to your life. Amen? Tingin sa katabi. Sabi mo sa kanya, I give order to your life. Kasi yan sabihin ng mga asawa eh. Kasi yun yung mga, yung mga misis, magaling dyan eh. So, the thing that we have to learn here is that if something is important, you must make it automatic. And this applies to our spiritual life as well. I have noticed this, that when I start my day and I automatically check my phone and did not do, and do not do my prayer time, the usual thing is I get overwhelmed by the tasks that are to come, the deadlines that have to be met. Do you agree? But I also realize, because sometimes I feel that I don't have time to, to pray because there's so many deadlines I have to finish. Have you ever experienced that? But now I'm letting go of that temptation of being deliberate that I have to pray. So every time I wake up now, my first prayer is, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Do you know that I pray that every day? And my wife is very turned out at times. <laughs> Are you at the feast? No! This is God! <laughs> so that's my prayer every day. And then I take a quiet time. I pray to God. And it sets my day. It sets my day because if I don't do that, and I drive, and there's traffic, and there's a bus that's a bully, I will make patol, you know? But sometimes when I pray, it, it sets my mind, okay, I will not make battle work. Are you getting my point? You're not, you have to be deliberate with your time. And usually we have a, a different view of meditating and reflecting. Ang feeling natin, meditation, ako 30 minutes yan. Wala kaming time. Ang daan, tagal. Diba? But our goal is this for you. Try to meditate even if it's just for a minute. Every day. So, how do you go about it? Back then, when I was younger, the way I pray is like this. So I start my prayer. I say my prayers. Lord, thank you for this. Lord, help me with this. Lord, can you bless this? Lord, can you, can you, I pray for this person and everything. Thank you, Lord. Then I'm finished. I go back. I go straight to work. So, later on, I realized that I was asking a priest that how, how can I hear the Lord clearly? And he told me that, Remember this, when you're praying, it's always a conversation with God. So he asked me, how do you pray? And I told him that I pray that way. So he told me, oh, it's a one-way conversation. So you have to set up a time when you pray and you just stay quiet and stay. And for some, believe me, it's difficult to remove everything that's in your mind. But we're inviting, inviting you to do that every day. Find your time, a consistent time to do it. Some do it while driving, some do it while riding on the train, or just do it. Even if it's just for a minute, start with a minute. And just listen to God. And sometimes you will hear it. Hindi parang si big brother, ah, oh, yung pag-uwin niya. Hindi naman, but sometimes you feel it. It's just, there's just peace, or there's a thought that comes in your mind, and that's from God. And to help you further, we have devotionals. That you could, that can guide you, you can read the daily readings, you can read a reflection from a priest, a reflection from, that's what you do, personal reports. Can you elbow the person beside you? Tell that person, allocate time for God. Amen. So the next important thing is this, 
communal rituals. Can you say that with me? Communal rituals. Communal rituals. These are the things you do as a family. I love it that because I have a three-year-old and you know that if you're a feast servant, it's almost difficult for us to attend a complete Mass to hear the complete talk. You want to know why? Because this is service, we are qu actually quite busy on a Sunday answering to people, uh, troubleshooting some needs here. So my wife and I decided that aside from a Sunday, because on Sunday we listen to an online Mass, on a Tuesday we must go to church as a family. So that has been our habit. And who, who, who among you here have toddlers or experience having toddlers? Do you think attending Mass and bringing a toddler is a good idea in terms of the difficulty of doing it? But it's not. Because it's like you're not attending Mass na lang din. Because half of the time you must be chasing after your child. But we knew that we have, we have to have this communal ritual. So every single Tuesday we will do that. Even if we know that my, my child doesn't understand it yet, but what we notice after several, it's a year already, we notice that she, she's beginning to learn and appreciate and absorb that. She loves the bell in the mass. You know the bell? There are parts when the bells are rung. She loves that. She, sometime, one time, she said, I'm going to go to the bell. 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 So yun ay naging kahilitin. So ang ginawa namin minsan, bumili na kami ng bell para sasabay siya pagka yung ano. Ang delikado lang pala doon, minsan pinatunog niya yung bell. Hindi pa dapat patunogin. Nagtinginan yung mga sakristan. Sinong nagkamali? Ganun. So may minumit ko na. But what, I'm, what, what why am I telling this? Because the habit is important. Now we're realizing na makakalakihan niya to. Makakalakihan yung nagsisimba. So hahanapin niya rin pagtanda na niya. Nakuha niyo? It's a communal ritual that you have to do. It's a ritual, ritual of remembering. What's another communal ritual that you should do as a family, if you ask me? It's celebrations. Birthday celebrations, graduation, milestones in life. Because I've been also talking to youth, youth people, young people in the ministry, and their usual pain point is that my mother was not available during my graduation. As simple as that. It's a meaningful time that you should be there. It should be a communal thing. So it, it must be a habit. Ito pa, simple tip. Bibilisan ko na lang. Pag kumakain together. I saw this at a mall, isang family. Kumakain sila o order sa restaurant. Lahat naka-cellphone. Tapos maya-maya, dumadating na yung order. Tapos bigla na lang silang kumain din sabay-sabay. Sabi ko, ang galing na. Ngayon ko na-realize. Nag-chat din sila sa isa. Kain na tayo. There's a study that shows that when a cell phone is present, automatic 50% of the, the conversation, yung lalim ng conversation goes away. So, parents or parents here, you can start that. Kahit hindi pa muna kayo kausapin ng mga anak nyo, pero pag kumakain kayo, huwag kayo mag-cell phone. Magkwentuhan kayo kahit kayo muna magkasawa, and then yung model na to your children, eventually sa salihan, makikikwento sila sa inyo. Are you getting my point? It must be a good one. Can you look at the person beside you? Tell that person, let's start that today. Amen. And aside from building strong family with your communal rituals, you need a family of stronger families. And that is your spiritual community here at the feast. Who among you consider the feast as your ritual or your habit weekly? Amen. A big hand to God. Diba? You know the feeling niya yung pag wala ka dito? Parang, ay, parang kulang. Di ako nakapag-feast. Ang toxic pa naman ang boss ko. Yung gano'n, di ba? Kasama ko pa naman siya. Alam, kasama pa na si boss. Hindi po mabait ko yung boss niya. Nag-feast nga eh. Di ba? But, if you want to go a bit deeper, I'd like to invite you to join one of our light groups. Uh, you can try it out because sometimes hindi magmamatch yung mga kasama mo eh. Pero eventually try to find because this has been my light group. I, I'm sure you notice some people there. See, Brother Odi is there, Brother Lila, Brother Mike Vinas. And we have been doing life together. Nagsimula pa lang po yan. Single pa lang kaming tatlo. Ni Mike, ni Odi, ni Lido. Single kaming lahat. Tapos hanggang sa nagkajowa kaming lahat. Oy, single. Yung sinipa yan. Hanggang sa na-engage kami lahat. Hanggang sa nagkasal lahat. Hanggang sa nagka mga small kids lahat. Baby. So, we do it regularly and we get to help out each other. 
That is part of your remembering about God's goodness because you also hear it from the lives of the people you talk to and dine with each other. Amen? And I'd like to remind you to affirm your habit of going to the feast because the feast is our weekly communal ritual of remembering God's love. Amen? Amen? At every feast, we sit here before Jesus, the new Moses that is teaching us and showing us his stuff during Mass, during worship, during the preaching, retelling our love history so we remember God's lessons and God's love. Amen? Amen. Can we all stand up? I'm about to end. Is it okay with you? Yeah. Alam mo sa totoo naman, I think you would agree with me on this. Hindi naman talaga hirap makaalala ang Pinoy. Tama ba? Kasi tatanin ko kayo straightforward. Can you recall your most traumatic experience? I'm sure you can say that I can remember it. Brother, I can even remember it in vivid detail. I can even hear what's being said in that moment. But I think the problem is that when we remember it in the context of just remembering it, to bring back the pain again, to remember the burden again, then it's useless. That's why I love what Jesus was telling the disciples in John chapter 14, verse 26. This was during the Last Supper. He was reminding them of this because he knew that his time is limited. He knew that one day he has to leave these people and they will experience challenges and persecution. So he was reminding them. John 14 verse 26, he was telling them. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. So today, brothers and sisters, I want you to be reminded of that. That if there's a deep-seated hurt or a deep memory that you try to put under the rug or sa Tagalog, pinabaon natin sa limo, God is telling you today, you can go back to the very same memory. But this time when you go back, it will be a different experience. You want to know why? Ask me why. Because now, you're going through it, not alone. You have Jesus with you. Amen. Amen. And that will change the history. That will change the remembering of it. Because in the process of remembering that deep and hurtful situation, that, that tragic event, you will notice that God has been with you. Helping you out from then up to now. So what I'll do right now is we'll do a remembering ritual. This is a tool that we use for healing. So I'll be giving instruction. I will invite you to close your eyes later on. We'll go to a reflection. And I want you, if you can, really participate in it. And I'm sure that this will help you. Are you okay with that? Let's do that. Let's pray in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now all to close your eyes. Please don't mind your surroundings. Those online, you can participate also. Do this in your own place. Find a spot, sit down, close your eyes, breathe. Try to empty your mind. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Right now, I want you to recall your most painful or your most traumatic or most tragic memory. I know that as you're remembering it now, you see the colors. The event is as if it's happening again today. You can actually hear what your abuser was telling you. You can actually hear right now what the person that has hurt is actually telling. It's as if it's happening again right now. As you're reliving, reliving that moment now, I want you now to change the situation. Because you're just, it's, this is now just in your head. You have the power. You can control this. So what you do now is you take away the color. It's still happening. You're still there. The situation is still happening. You can still see the clothes of the person that has hurt you. You can still 
hear the voice of that person. But now the scene is black and white. Let's shift it further. Now as you're replaying that scene, I want you to take yourself out of that situation. Imagine now that you're in a room seated by a couch and you're now just watching this black and white tragic experience that happened in your life. As you're watching that, you remember, Aray, Lord, masakit pa rin. Lord, bakit nga ba nangyari to? You're watching it now on that flat screen TV sitting on your couch. And I want you to imagine now that on the left side of the room, there is a door and the door opens. Jesus comes in, sits with you beside the couch, holding your hand and telling you, Anak, I'm sorry that this has to happen to you. What happened was wrong. What happened was not okay. But I'm here today to tell you that things can change. That you have the power to move on from this because of my love and my mercy. Imagine now that as you are holding God's hand and as that, that scene replays in that flat screen TV, that the, the pain you're feeling is now slowly fading away because you're holding the warm hand and the firm grip of Jesus right now. You feel a little warmth in your heart. You can still see the scene, you can hear the audio, but you feel stronger now because you're holding Jesus' hand while this is happening. As you're watching, as you're replaying this moment in your life. Jesus is with you. And now I want you to look at the right side of the couch where you are seated. There's a remote control. And I want you to pick that up. And since you're just watching that scene from that TV, I want you to lower that volume slowly. From 100, you're pressing the, the volume down button until it's lowering down to 50, to 20, to 10. Until what you're watching now is a black and white picture of your tragic experience with no audible dialogue. You feel a little bit stronger now because you're still holding the hand of Jesus. And now you can't hear anything. What's happening is inaudible. So, what I want you to do now is again hold that remote and turn off that show that you're watching on that TV. The screen goes black. And it's quiet. You feel the warmth of Jesus' hand and the firmness of His grip. You can hear Him breathing. And now God, Jesus proceeds to tell you, you know what, my child? We can now finally change what's being shown in the picture of your mind, in your life. Turn on the TV again. So you turned on the TV again. And what you see now is a new scene. Yourself, five years from now, ten years from now, happy. Achieving your dreams. Jesus is excited, still holding your hand, shaking it a little bit, telling you, this is my plan for you, my child. This is what will become of you. Because I will not let anything that has hurt you in the past hinder you from going to where I want you to be. Watch this now, because this is my great plan for you. You will achieve the healing that you desire. You will achieve the provision that you are praying for. You will receive the renewed relationship that you have been asking for. You will achieve that healing, that good health that you've been working for and striving for. Watch it now as it happens to you. This is your life. Because starting today, you will, you will move on with life, not alone, but with me, holding your hand, gripping you tight, and telling you that nothing in this world can separate you from my love and my power. Yes, 
Bad things can still happen. But I will tell you today that I will always use it for good. That I will always use it to transform it to a blessing for you. Amen. Amen. Jesus now proceeds to hug you. And embrace you so tight that all your worries fade away. You just feel this warm, happy feeling. Thank you, Lord, for embracing me today. Thank you, Lord, for loving me today. Thank you for reminding me that you are here. Almighty Father, I thank you because you're actually here. Your presence is strong here today, Father. And our prayer is that we may be always reminded of that goodness, your presence, your power. Right now, brothers and sisters, you can open your eyes and we'll be singing worship. I want this to be a declaration for you. The Lord... And I will move through life with you. You are my strength, Lord. You are my courage. So I want you to voice that out as we sing to God, as we worship God today. Can you raise your hands, please?